Hi everybody, my name is Jens Larsen. A thing that we never talk about when it comes to music theory is that there is really sort of a set of basic things that you want to be really good at and that you really want to have in your system. And that's what you're going to build on. That's what's going to help you understand the rest and the more complicated things that you're going to run into when you're working with music theory. And actually none, none of those basic things are, are modes. Modes are not that interesting for this, I think. If you want to learn more about jazz guitar, improve the way that you solo, check out some interesting arpeggios or chord voicings, then subscribe to my channel. If you want to make sure not to miss anything, then click the little bell notification icon next to the subscribe button. Learn your scales. So the first thing I think you should work on is just being really good at knowing the notes that are in the scales that you need. Uh, when you're improvising over chords, then you're using different scales and you want to know what notes are in those, those scales. I don't think it's really that tricky to understand that if you're playing a song in the key of E flat major, then it's really useful to also just know the notes that are found in the E flat major scale. Using scales is really just about refining the amount of notes that we can use when we're improvising in this respect. So if we have a song in the key of E flat major, then there's going to be like all sorts of different chords in there. One chord that we're probably going to come across is this chord, which is a B flat seven. And uh, the scale that you would use on that is then, because the song is an E flat major, probably going to be an E flat major scale. That's what we expect to hear. So if you know what that is, then that makes it a little bit easier to improvise something that actually makes sense. Uh, where the chromatic scale is going to be a little bit more difficult. So we're just taking away five notes because they're difficult to use. You can still use them, but you need to be a little bit more careful with them. So you can use like... I'm using a lot of chromatic notes in here that are not in the E flat major scale, but I'm using them either as passing notes or as enclosures. And those are different ways to just get to use the other notes. But if I'm just using the notes that are in the scale, then it's a little bit easier to make melodies with them. It can sound like really a lot to learn all the scales by how to know them, but as I have in another video, you only really need three scales. So you need the major scale, the harmonic minor scale, and the melodic minor scale. Now, if you're into more modern jazz, then probably you also need the diminished scale in there uh, along the way, because you're going to be using that quite a lot, especially on dominant chords. Uh, but for the rest, then, I mean, Miss Young modes and augmented scale and whole tone scale is not stuff that you're going to be using really a lot. So that's not stuff that you need to know as well as all the other ones. And then you're just down to a few scales that you need to know in all 12 keys. And of course here, if you're not thinking in modes, then that's a lot easier because you just have to have an overview of those scales in all keys. Of course you can learn this just sort of by thinking about interval construction and stuff like that. But probably if you're watching this video, then you're already practicing most of these scales on your instrument. So it's better just to already connect it to the way that you're practicing and just start to really think about the notes that you're playing on your instrument. Uh, and in that way, learn it. I think that's a much more useful way than trying to just learn it and construct it from intervals. You need to do that as well. But at the same time, you can probably make it a lot quicker if you're using sort of your knowledge of the instrument and what you already know uh, to teach you about what notes are in the scale. Learn diatonic chords and diatonic harmony. So the next thing you should do if you're already working on getting your scales into your system and really knowing what notes are in there and having a good overview of that is probably to start working on figuring out what chords are actually found within those scales. Because those are the chords that you're going to come across. If you play a song in E flat major, then most of the chords are going to be diatonic to E flat major. And that means that if you know your E flat major scale and you know the chords are in there, then you also have an idea about how to improvise over them. And you understand the context that they're found in. What you do is not too tricky uh, when it comes to constructing diatonic chords and diatonic arpeggios. If we have the E flat major scale, so then really the way that you're building chords within a scale is just to stack thirds in there. So E flat G, B flat D is the E flat major seven chord. Then F, A flat, C, B flat is F minor seven. And then we get G minor seven, G, B flat D, F, uh, then the A flat major seven, A flat C, E flat G. So in that way, you're just going through it and building the chords. You want to know sort of the order of the chords in terms of what kind of chord is found on what degree of the scale. That's useful information to know. Also because it helps you generalize and understanding so that when you're playing a song uh, in one key and then you have to play another song that is similar but is in another key that you can still sort of get the links and see how they are probably moving in the same way because 
chords don't really move in random ways. They tend to be moving in sort of pretty predictable cliche progressions most of the time. And if you can sort of generalize that across keys, then that's going to make it a lot easier to understand songs and also to hear when you're just looking at the progression, what it sounds like, because you're looking at it and you're realizing, okay, this is actually something I've already played, not in A flat major ever, but I played it in C major and F major. I know exactly what it sounds like. So what you want to learn here is probably that for each of the different scales that you're improvising with and that you need to know, or that you already know, in fact, then um, you need to know sort of the order of the chords. So you need to know that if it's a major scale, then the first chord is a major seven, the second is a minor seven, the third is a minor seven, and so on and so forth. You need to know that for a harmonic minor scale, then the seventh degree is, is a diminished chord. Uh, and uh, for the melodic minor scale, the sixth degree is a minor seven flat five chord. Those kind of things are essential to know because then you know the harmony that's in there. And one way you can work with this is also just by practicing your scales in diatonic arpeggios and diatonic chords, because then it gets clearer. And then you're just really practicing not only to play that, which is anyway useful, because you need that when you're improvising over the changes. If you're improvising over a song, uh, whenever some chords come, chord come along, then you want to hit the chord tones of that chord so that you can hear that what you're playing is connecting to what is happening under you. That's how you play the changes, of course. Uh, but you can just practice that by just practicing diatonic uh, chords as chords or as arpeggios and connecting your knowledge of the scale with your, your knowledge of um, the, the different harmony on the different degrees. The reason I can keep on publishing videos every week is that I have a community of people supporting me over on Patreon. I'm very grateful for that. And if you want to help me keep making videos, then check out my Patreon page. If you join us over on Patreon, then I can also give you something in return for your support. Learn how chords are constructed and relating notes to a root. So this is really just about understanding all the other notes, because now we, can, we have the scale for our chord, and uh, we have sort of the diatonic arpeggio that we're going to be using as sort of the important chord tones. But we still have a few notes left in the scale that are uh, in the scale, but they're not directly related to the chords. Sometimes you can add extensions to a chord as well. Uh, so since this whole lesson is somehow in E flat, uh, if I take my E flat uh, major scale and then first build an E flat chord on that, so E flat major seven, which is E flat uh, the root, the third, which is a G, fifth is a B flat, D is the seventh, and then I can start adding extensions on this. And really the way I'm adding the extensions is just by moving up because every time I'm doing this, I'm moving up a third within the scale. And I can do that from D as well. If I move up a third from in, uh, in the scale, then I get an F and that's the ninth of the... So that's the ninth of my E flat major seven, 11 and 13. So A flat is the 11, C is the 13, and then I'm back on the root, which is of course E flat. So you want to do that, you want to be aware of what are the possible extensions for either, each of those uh, each of those diatonic chords. And one of the reasons why I want to know that is also just because then you know if you're playing chords, like what's available, what kind of extension can I actually fit in here that are going to work. Uh, because that is going to be related to the key as much as anything. Uh, mm -hmm. Another thing is also just that you will have an idea about what notes to uh, land on and sometimes also what notes not to really emphasize too much when you're improvising. Because sometimes you can get the extensions to sound great, and so other times it's a little bit more difficult. Any of the notes in here, in my E flat major scale, as a root, and then see what the other notes are. So if I take the fourth degree, so A flat, and then I have a major second, and a major third, and then I have a sharp four, and then the fifth, so E flat, and then we have the six, which is a major six, and major seven, and then I'm back on the root. And of course, you could con continue with 9, 10, sharp 11, and uh, that wouldn't be a 12, actually, which, you don't, which I don't really need too much of here. Um, 12 and then 13, which I can't reach. There. So this way of thinking is just understanding how every note in the scale can be related to that root, and then you have an idea about what it's going to sound like and also what... Um, what it's going to work as if you, if you put it into the chord. So really what we're doing here is that we're just refining the amount of notes that we have available and explaining what they do uh, on top of the chord. 
So first we have the chromatic scale, that's just all the notes. Then we start to refine that a little bit by just taking a scale and using that on the chord. So now we have seven notes. But if you look at the diatonic harmony, then you can also quickly figure out that, uh, that of those seven notes, four of them, or three of them if it's a triad, are chord tones, and the rest are extensions. And then finally you can also look at the construction of the chord and look at what those extensions are against the roots so you know what they sound like and how they work. If you want some more info on music theory and some of the things that are available there, then you can check out this video where I'm not so much concerned with the scales and the diatonic harmony as I am with just some of the basic but also a little bit more interesting progressions that you have uh, available and that you want to know if you want to play jazz music. If you want to learn more about jazz guitar and this is the first time you see one of my videos, then subscribe to my channel. If you want to help me keep making videos, then check out my Patreon page. That's about it for this week. Thank you for watching and until next week.